Just one comment you left in the fifth book, which I loved, that you said uh, Segwit, no, Lightning was Bitcoin proof of stake. I just wanted, you know, that, how does everything sort of feed into that and how things are going to change, you know, with all those questions um, presented again? Sorry, I think it's slightly babbling. Uh, that's something I said in the past. And basically what I'm saying there is that Lightning Network involves doing local validation of the same consensus rules as Bitcoin. It has to be the same consensus rules. But you get to earn fees by committing funds into a channel. That sounds very much like proof of stake to me. I think it, it represents a tremendous opportunity for um, users who want to run a Bitcoin full node. If you want to run a Bitcoin full node, it takes quite a lot of commitment in data storage, and CPU, and RAM, and bandwidth. Not many people do that. Probably about five to 15,000 users. You are running one right there. I am running one as well. Great. Um, how many people here are running a full node? Ten. Wow. Go Singapore. <laughs> Um, it takes a big commitment in resources, and you don't get paid to do this. How many of you would be running a full node if you could also run a lightning node, commit some Bitcoin to it, and earn fees on it? And so now you see that was about 20 people. So clearly incentives matter. Lightning is one way we can incentivize running full nodes, fully validating nodes and also full archive nodes, potentially. That is going to be a really important development in Bitcoin. And I am very much in favor. Now, you would think that a group of miners that run nodes that already collect all transactions, right, already have to be fully validating nodes, would look at Lightning Network and go, Hey, we could earn more fees using the same infrastructure by running Lightning nodes. We could be hubs for payments. We could extend into this space. Why are they not doing that? Because Lightning Network and running full nodes is software. And it requires maintenance, system administrators, and security professionals, and configuration, and upgrades, and all of the kinds of things that you can't simply get someone to rack and mount hardware to do. It's an alien world. It's not better. It's not worse. It's just on the other side of that culture divide. That goes a long way to explain why miners aren't jumping up and down and saying, "Hey, yeah, I want to run Lightning." We are going to be best positioned to be running these hubs, because it is not the same as racking mining hardware. Uh, I would like to ask you a question about something that you just mentioned briefly, which was the Lightning Network. Yes. And this is something that fascinates me a lot. And I still remember like, the first time I read about Bitcoin, and I was up all night, just by fa how fascinated I was by it. And I had the same experience, actually. I followed the debate about the scaling debate and everything, and then I read about the Lightning Network, and I thought to myself, oh, God damn it, they solved it, they solved it. And because that's really what I, felt, what I feel about the Lightning Network. And, uh, but that was almost, I think, two years ago now. Yes. And uh, I'm wondering, uh, because I've also read about the SegWit soft fork, I think it's called. Yes. Uh, and, but my current understanding is actually that we can, or not I, but they, the smart guys, they can implement Lightning Network on top of the existing uh, Bitcoin network without uh, SegWit. And I'm just wondering, yes. as, as you said before, like everyone should have their first experience with uh, making a Bitcoin transaction. Is it, is it actually possible for me right now to have my first experience with making a Lightning network transaction, to f just to feel that I'm sort of part of the solution. Without segregated witness, which is a transaction malleability fix, it's an architecture change the way transactions are organized. Um, Lightning can work, but it removes some very useful features. So, um, when you're using Bitcoin, you don't have to be online in order to receive Bitcoin from someone. 
With Lightning, you do have to be online in order to initiate, and then you also have to remain online and monitor the channel to prevent the other party from unilaterally closing the channel in a way that cheats you out of your balance. Um, and Lightning has this fascinating market-based game theory where your software is watching the channel, and if the other party tries to close it unilaterally and steal the balance, you have a certain time, about eight hours, to transmit a competing transaction that actually takes everything. So the punishment for trying to cheat in Lightning is you lose everything. Right? Uh, but in order to apply that punishment so that the other party doesn't try to cheat, you have to be online. Now, if SegWit is passed, there's another way to do this, which is really fascinating, where you can outsource for a fee, the monitoring of the payment channel to a third party who knows absolutely nothing about the channel. They don't know how much money you have in the channel, they don't know who the channel is with, and they can monitor for that for you. And you don't have to be online anymore. And if someone tries to steal from your channel, they get a little cut of the penalty, um, make a bit of money on that, and you don't have to remain online. But the only way to do that is if SegWit is running. We need transaction malleability fixed to do that. So. Lightning with SegWit is much better for privacy and for security than Lightning without SegWit, even though we can do it. Right? It's much more usable, much more straightforward, much more easy for the users, because then that can be handled transparently. So I would much rather wait a bit. But if you want to try it out, you can try it out on Testnet today. I, I've already been running a Lightning node now for five months. Yeah. And what happened in the two years? since it was first discussed, was they built it. And they built it with full end-to-end, multi-hop, onion-routed encryption that will increase Bitcoin's privacy substantially and make Bitcoin a much more anonymous network and much more difficult to analyze, which is fantastic. That, that's really good. So, in, in the legal terms, it's an assignment of claims. It's a series of IOUs. It's a series of forward-looking promises. But the, the thing is that if a party doesn't deliver on, the, on their forward promise, they can't collect on the promise that's coming to them in a routed network. So, you extend these promises out to your final destination. They provide the unlocking code that rolls it back so that everybody gets paid. So, you don't have to trust anybody in between. If someone doesn't fulfill their promise in between, you just start a different route to get to your uh, destination. No one can take money without fulfilling the terms of the contract. It's a system of smart contracts. So you don't need to trust any of the other participants. In fact, if this is properly implemented, you have no idea who the other participants are. You just say, I'm paying Alex a tenth of a Bitcoin. Find me a route. Great. It takes 233 hops to get there. I don't care. Just like you have no idea how your TCP packet actually got to Google, you don't care. Um, and it's the same system. In fact, it's better because the first implementation of Lightning Network that we're building is based on onion routing like Tor. So every connection is encrypted, which means that when you receive a Lightning Network promise, you have no idea if the person sending it to you is the person who started the transaction. Or it's someone who's just reeling it from someone else. And you have no idea if the next person you're sending it to is the end of the transaction, or they're going to relay it somewhere else. You have only one hop information. And so it also massively increases privacy and anonymity. Let's take some more questions. Yes? This is a smart contract. This is smart contracts using uh, three technologies in Bitcoin. One is uh, multi-signature technology. The other one is check lock time and check sequence verify. Mostly check sequence verify, which is relative time from the previous transaction. Uh, and a, a new invention called hash lock time contracts, which is a way to forward a promise that can only be unlocked by a secret. Yes. So these are smart contracts using Bitcoin, correct?
why would an intermediary want to do this? For a number of reasons. Uh, one of the reasons they would want to do this is because using this also involves participating in the network, so you just do it because you want to use the Lightning Network. Another reason you want to do it is because you can collect a fee. So part of the option there is to make very, very small fees payable to intermediaries if you want. And you could then select the route that gives you the lowest fees or the route that gives you the lowest latency. And you can use a whole marketplace of services to implement that. Yes, yes, this would introdu introduce transaction fees, but you can talk about transaction fees on a whole different scale because um, because you're not required to fill a capacity that is very limited, which is a one megabyte block. Uh, the fees that are likely to be used for something like a Lightning Hub are going to go close to the marginal cost of delivering that service, which is tiny tiny so you're going very close to zero anybody who charges high fees will get pushed out of the market by people who charge much lower fees and if nobody else wants to do it I'll do it yes yes well you don't settle any of these hops on the blockchain um, because actually what you're doing when you're when you're using a, a big route so the question was sorry let me repeat the questions um, if you use a route that's less costly but has more hops won't that introduce more settlement costs on the blockchain no because as you in fact when you create lots and lots of hops what you're doing is you're canceling out bilateral obligations between the parties involved in the hops so if now instead of uh, you know party two owing party three, now they owe a bit less. So you can actually balance out all of the settlements. It will actually reduce the settlements on the blockchain. We don't know yet how this is going to play out in terms of scalability, but I'm very excited. Let's take two more questions for Lightning. Um, without on-chain scaling, won't this push uh, transaction fees away from the miners and therefore compromise Bitcoin's long-term decentralization and scaling? No, it won't, because for every payment channel, you need an anchor transaction, which is the one you set you use to set up the payment channel, and you need a settlement transaction if and when you decide to close the the payment channel and. And, and, and so um, you still need transactions. What it expands is the ability of, of doing a lot more transactions in between those two. Yes, so there is the possibility that it's too expensive to go between channels, in which case we're also going to need to scale up the core uh, Bitcoin blockchain layer, which I think is inevitable. We're going to do both. This is not about a choice between scaling on one layer or another. It's about scaling at every layer. What these technologies do is they offer you leverage. So, so when you scale one megabyte on the lower layer, that effect is multiplied by a thousand on the layer above. So you can have this multiplier effect. Last question on Lightning. Uh, that uh, Will Lightning Network be compatible with Bitcoin Unlimited? That is entirely up to the Bitcoin Unlimited developers to choose whether they want to introduce that. If they introduced segregated witness, and they've already introduced check lock time verify, then yes, you can run Lightning Network on top of that. You can run Lightning Network on top of Ethereum. You can run Lightning Network on top of any cryptocurrency that enables uh, the three basic primitives of checking hashes, multi-signature contracts, and lock time, time-based controls. So it's a network that can be overlaid over anything. All right, great. So now we have a basic understanding. I hope everybody's got a basic understanding. The Lightning Network is this thing that can be layered on top of Bitcoin, creating these bilateral obligations that allow you to stream money at a different